This is the new Dacia Duster. Now, the Duster for about 10 years now has been one of the cheapest ways to own a new SUV. And we've seen recently that Dacia's been on a bit of a roll with the new Sandero, which is really cheap, but in quite a few areas, really good. So is Dacia still on a roll with the facelifted version of the second generation Duster? And what exactly is new? We're gonna find out in this review, but before we start, make sure you subscribe to our channel and go to whatcar.com for a great deal on your next car. So what's new with the facelifted duster? Well, on the outside, you've got these new Y-shaped LED headlights and the indicators are LEDs as well. And the front end generally has a slightly different look from before. At the rear, there's a slightly longer spoiler than there was before, but it's not exactly a Civic Type R, is it? There's also new alloys, new wheels, all of which is apparently aero optimized. So really, you've got to be a pretty hardcore duster fan to be able to notice those exterior changes from the old model to the new one. Inside, the differences are a bit more noticeable because you've now got this bigger eight inch touchscreen infotainment system, which is actually the same one you'll find in the new Sandero. There's also been a change to the trim lineup. So the ultra basic, ultra cheap entry level access trim has been dropped, which means that the duster lineup now starts with essential. And that's still pretty basic with steel wheels and manual air conditioning. But to be fair, by new car standards, a starting price of £13,995 is still very cheap, especially for an SUV. The engine lineup is also very slightly different. So now the top TCE 150 petrol engine gets a six speed dual clutch automatic gearbox and the TCE 100 by fuel, which runs on petrol and LPG, gets a bigger LPG tank. And we're going to talk more about that potentially very interesting version of the Duster later on. The Duster still has a familiar set of rivals. So it's up against cars like the Seat Ateca, the Skoda Karok and the Peugeot 3008, all in the family SUV class. But because this car is definitely towards the budget end of the scale, one of its closest competitors is the MG ZS. Let's take a closer look inside. And this infotainment system is definitely a step forwards compared to the old seven inch unit you had in the previous Duster. So now it's got a simple layout, it's got decent graphics. Yes, it would be better if there were more physical controls to help operate it, but the screen is responsive enough. If you go for an entry level Duster, then you miss out on a touchscreen entirely, but you still get DAB radio and Bluetooth. And to be honest, is there an infotainment system that's better than just a smartphone on a phone holder? Now, for the rest of the interior, the tech has been updated, but the material quality definitely hasn't noticeably. So Dacia's have always felt a few generations behind what the very best new cars offer in terms of interior look and feel. But now this duster is definitely feeling very dated. So it's not just old school, it's prehistoric compared to the best cars in this class. Everywhere you look, everything you touch, you can't escape the feeling that it's all built to a price, especially up here on the door cards. The plastics just don't feel very nice at all, really. Even an MG ZS, which is available for similar money and not amazing, is trimmed better than this duster. Now, for some people, that might not be a problem at all. You might be buying the Duster, seeing it as a kind of cost-effective family workhorse. And if that's the case, then fine. You'll at least be pleased that it's all relatively well screwed together in terms of actual build quality. Now, the driving position is quite high. You do definitely feel like you're in an SUV. But if you want to tweak the driver's seat height, then you can't do that on the entry-level trim. You've got to go for the higher ones. The entry-level trim also misses out on adjustable lumbar support. But on those higher trim levels, you get this lever on the side of the seat to help use it there. What no Dacia gets is a spot to rest your left foot, which is annoying on long motorway journeys. Every Dacia does get this odd Renault sourced audio stalk that comes out of the steering column here. Now this is something that dates back many, many years in Renaults and in Dachas. And the first time you use it, it is utterly baffling because you can't see what any of the buttons do. It's blocked by the steering wheel. But once you've worked it out, once you've used it a few times, to be honest, it is relatively convenient having them so close to hand there. There's a decent amount of space in the back of the duster. The driver's seat is in my driving position. I'm just under six foot. And there's a good amount of legroom and headroom 
is also fairly impressive. It definitely doesn't feel cramped back here at all, really. Although an MG ZS is even more accommodating for rear seat passenger space, if that's important to you. In the Duster, if you want to sit three adults side by side, the only problem you might have is whoever sat in the middle has got this quite wide lump in the floor. But really, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. And you can definitely tell this should be able to cope with family life pretty easily. You can get front wheel drive or four wheel drive versions of the Duster. And while the overall boot capacities are a bit different, you'll still be able to get seven suitcases, no matter which version you go for. And the boot itself really is big, wide, long, simple. It's a good practical shape. There is a small loading lip at the front, which you'll have to lift stuff over. And one slightly annoying thing is right at the back of the boot, there's that small dip just before the rear seat. So if you've got loose stuff in the boot, it might roll down there and get a bit stuck. But really, it's not a big issue. And overall, this is very practical. The Duster has never been the most inspiring car on the road, but much like the interior, if you're getting this car for cheap, no thrills transportation, then there really isn't much that's gonna properly disappoint you in the driving experience, which might not sound like much of a compliment, and it isn't really, but the fact is there are lots of other cars in this class that are better than the Duster. But what you've got to bear in mind is that the Duster starts from 14,000 pounds, and a Skoda Karok, which is, you know, much better in every area, starts from 24,000 pounds. So of course there's gonna be a difference. Now, the Duster that we're driving is our favorite one in the lineup. It's the TCE 130, and it gets a 1.3 liter turbocharged petrol engine, which has actually got really good mid-range performance. It gets you up to motorway speeds really easily, and then has all the flexibility that you need to manage those big, long journeys, and basically any kind of driving and any kind of journey that you're gonna be doing in this car. It's definitely better than the TCE 90, which is the cheapest duster you can buy, but that engine just feels really flat. At the top of the lineup, the most expensive version of the duster you can buy is the TCE 150, which, sure, gives you a bit more zip in a straight line. It gets an automatic gearbox, and it's actually the only duster you can get with an automatic gearbox. But unless you have to have the fastest duster, or you have to have an automatic gearbox, then there's little reason to really recommend that engine over the TCE 130. The six speed manual gearbox that the Dacia Duster gets is actually pretty good to be honest. It doesn't have that kind of slick, quick shift that you get in the say a Tekka, but it's much more mechanical feeling than that car. And in some ways, a bit more satisfying to use, but that might be a personal preference. There's also a diesel engine, the blue DCI 115, which is pokey enough, but doesn't actually add any extra low end muscle over the petrol. But of all the engines in the Duster lineup, there is one slightly left field choice, which could be worth considering. The TCE 100 by fuel runs on petrol and LPG. To do that, it gets two fuel tanks. And the good thing is that if you go for that version of the Duster, the extra LPG tank goes where the spare wheel would have gone. So there's actually no reduction in boot space. Although obviously that means that you can't get a spare wheel. So why would you choose that version of the Duster? Well, it all comes down to the potential for massive fuel savings. Now, when the engine runs on LPG, it's actually a little bit less fuel efficient than when it runs on petrol. But the crucial thing is that right now, LPG is far cheaper at the pumps than petrol. So there really is massive potential for huge fuel savings. And the other thing to bear in mind is that because this car has two fuel tanks, then it will have an enormous claimed range. So Dacia says you'll be able to travel for 767 miles before both tanks go empty. And the final thing to consider is that the engine makes more power when it's running on LPG. So it feels a bit stronger and it's also smoother and quieter. And if you're thinking that this must be the most expensive duster in the lineup, it's actually the same amount of money as the entry level petrol. The duster borrows a lot of its mechanical underpinnings from older Renaults. So it doesn't have the most cutting edge or sophisticated suspension setup and something like a Skoda Karok does feel more polished, more comfortable overall, but the Duster does feel soft. So it does really well to absorb road imperfections and just generally send you down the road in a pretty comfortable, relatively cushioned manner. 
and it doesn't really feel that bouncy or out of control either and there's definitely no kind of firmness or sharpness to the ride like you do actually get a bit with the Seat Ateca and all of that is helped by the increasingly rare combination of small alloy wheels with high profile tires but then this soft suspension setup does mean that to drive it's not brilliant so there's quite a lot of body lean through corners and if you drive a Seat Ateca back to back with a duster then the Seat is just so much more tied down so much sharper but really, for the kinds of journeys, the type of driving you're going to be doing in the duster, it's fine. The steering has apparently been recalibrated to feel sharper at higher speeds, but if we're honest, you're probably not going to notice that. So, if you want to buy a duster, we would recommend going for the TCE 130 petrol engine. But if you're interested in the LPG version of the car, then the TCE 100 by fuel is actually cheaper and could make a lot of sense. It's also a very rare offering in the UK to find a new car that has LPG straight from the factory. But just bear in mind that if you do go for that duster, then you can't actually take it on the Euro tunnel. The other trump card the Duster can play over many of its rivals is its surprising ability off-road. So if you go for a 4x4 version of this car, then it really can conquer pretty much anything that a true off-roader like the Suzuki Jimny can, but the ground clearance isn't particularly amazing. And if you go for a front-wheel drive version of the Duster, then it's definitely not as capable off-road. There are three trims to choose from. Entry-level essential is very cheap, but very basic, so we'd go for mid-spec comfort trim to get the infotainment system and a reversing camera. The range topping model is called Prestige and it gets a heated driver's seat, a multi-view camera and 17 inch alloys. But with the Duster we'd keep it cheap. Now there aren't really many optional extras to choose from with the Duster apart from six different metallic paint colours costing £595 each. If you don't want any of them there's a standard solid white. The only other option is adding a spare wheel for £250. And of course, the thing that makes the Duster stand out so much is its price. It is frankly staggeringly cheap compared to any of its rivals. It's only the MG ZS that gets close to it. But that low price comes at a cost. The Duster is well off the pace when it comes to safety. The most advanced safety feature you can get is blind spot monitoring, and that's only available on top spec prestige models. Automatic emergency braking, something we'd expect every new car to get as standard, isn't available with the Duster, not even as an option. So this very gentle facelift doesn't transform the Dacia Duster into some world-beating budget SUV, but it does mean that the positive traits from before are still present and correct. So it's got a soft ride, it's got a big boot, it's got an impressive 4x4 version, and the LPG Duster could make a lot of sense to a lot of people. But it also does all mean that the bad things from before are also still present with the facelifted duster. So it's not brilliant to drive, it feels quite cheap inside, and the safety definitely does need an upgrade on this car. Overall, it's not the best car in the world, it's not the best car in its class, but it is very cheap. So if you're willing to accept those compromises, it can be very good value indeed. If you want even more information on this car or any other new car on sale, go to whatcar.com where you can also get a great deal on your next car. But before you go, make sure you're subscribed to our channel for lots more new car reviews and tell us in the comments below, what do you think of the Duster?